Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Today we will finish pretty much everything that we need to do to host and interact with Win32 Windows in the level editor. Here in this render surface view loaded, we can attach another procedure to our main window. The same way that we attached this message filter to our hosted window, we can attach another method to our main window to handle messages. So let's implement this one. As you can see, again, they have exactly the same signature. And now we can just copy paste this. And this time when the main window is moved or resized, these messages will also be sent and received here in this method. So. We can handle them here. And because we are handling this size here, we don't have to do anything with it in here, so we can remove it. So to combine these two methods, we need two Boolean fields. One is to indicate if we can resize the window, and the other one is whether the window was moved instead of resized. Here, where we are resizing the window, we want to prevent this message from being handled. So here, if uh, we can resize, we call the resize method. And while we are resizing the main window, then we can set the can resize to false. Moved is also false because we are not moving, obviously. And where we enter either size or move, then we set moved to true. And the value of can resize is set to false depending on whether we are sizing. So when we enter size move and we are actually resizing the window, then also this message will be received. And therefore can size will be set to false and moved will be set to false again. And if we are just moving the window, then moved is true. And this message won't be received. And therefore can resize is true and moved is also true. When we exit size move, because we didn't handle any size messages here, because can resize was false, we need to handle resizing here as well. Now this way you can see that when I start moving the main window and I stop, still nothing happens because I am holding down the mouse button. And when I let go, then the window is resized. And in other cases, when I resize the window like this, it is resized as well. So calling this resize is minimized. And I'm strict about this because right now it's a light operation because we just update the internal value of that client rectangle. But later on, when we have a renderer, the render surface will be resized as well. And that's a bit heavier operation because you have to destroy and create new resources in your renderer. And you don't want to do that often because it's a waste of processing power, right? So that's why I'm a bit more strict about this. And for now it works fine. The only case when it doesn't work perfectly is when I minimize the window from a maximized state and restore it. You can see that the window is still resized. 
So this is empty here. And now when I go to minimize and to maximize, you can see that the window, although the size of the window hasn't been changed, it's still resized. If you know how to really get rid of this case as well, just let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, it's good enough. And one more thing that we need to do before going to the implementation of the window and do the resize thing is that we also need to pick any window that contains our render surface view, not just the main window, because we can have multiple WPF windows open and any of those could contain one such user control. So we need to get that window. And the way to do that is to just walk up the visual tree. And if we find a window, then that's the window that contains this user control. And we can take that window. And to walk up the visual tree, I need to create a helper method. So here I created an extension method that we can call to find any type of visual parent in the visual tree. All right, so we take the parent of this dependency object, which we first check if it's a visual because we only want to walk the visual tree and we get the parent of this dependency object. And if that's not null, we can check if the type of the parent is the type that we requested. And if so, we can just return that parent. And if that's not the case, then we get the parent of the parent and that way we can walk all the way up to the top of the visual tree. And if along the way we found something, a parent, that's the type that we want, then we can return it. And otherwise, if we didn't find such a parent at all, then we return no. So going back to our render surface view, instead of having the main window like so here, we can just take this control and find a visual parent for it of type window. So now if we use this control on any window, not just the main window, we can get that window by calling this function and it will hopefully give us this window. And then we can attach this message handler to that particular window. And the last thing that is remained to do is to actually do this resize because right now we only have this log message and we actually want to call an API function here to resize our surface for us. And then we have to implement this function. This is a bit backwards because we don't have the C++ implementation yet. So this is kind of invalid, but we can already do this. Now the question that's left is what do we use for width and height here? And the answer is if you look at the implementation of the resize function here, this function is called whenever we want to tell the window to resize itself. But in the case that we are hosting the window, the resize has already happened. And the purpose of calling this function is just to update the client area for us. 
Therefore, we can check if this window is parented. And if so, we just update the client area and otherwise it's going to be a regular call that will resize the standalone window. And checking if this window is parented is really easy because we can check the style for that. Remember, we set the style of the window in create window. If we are parented, we set this WS child flag and therefore we can just check that here. So if we call this function while we are a parented window, then only this client area is updated and otherwise the window is really resized. So we can ask the question again, what width and height we should use? Well, obviously we don't have to use any because we just update the client area. So we can just give any value and I'm just going to use zero, which is going to do the job for us. Now I can set a breakpoint here. Now you can see that we get here right away because the first time the window is added to our user interface, then it's resized. And now if I try to resize it again, like so, then we can see that this client area is updated. So let's remove this message here. And one more thing that I would like to do is to actually check if we can have more than one window in our world editor. And I can do that by trying to add more render surface views here. Now we have four windows here and we can use these grid splitters to resize them. Like so. And I can set a breakpoint here again to check if the resizing is done correctly. So if we resize, we should get here four times. Okay, so this is the first time and then I'll press F5 to continue running. And this is the second time we get here and this is the third time and this is the fourth time. And if I press F5 again, we go back to our program. So that's good. And finally, I can check if our windows are being disposed correctly after I close this window. And for that, I can go down here in remove window and set a breakpoint here. And when we close the window, then we correctly get here and our windows are destroyed. So one, two, three, and four. That's great. That's all I wanted to do for today. We successfully hosted our windows in the WPF application and in our world editor in particular. And we are handling the resizing correctly so that our renderer, when we have such a renderer, is also resized correctly. This concludes the topic of hosting Win32 windows in .NET applications. I'm looking forward to start working on a new topic, which is fairly big and therefore will take several episodes. 
And that topic is the asset pipeline for importing and conditioning various kinds of assets, such as geometry and textures, so that we can feed them to the game engine. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus, there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.